These blue lock pairs are undoubtedly washed, and I'm going to tell you exactly why in this video. If you guys like this type of content, please make sure to like and subscribe, and you'll get more of this content. Anyways, let's get right into it. In this video, I'm basically going to be talking about all these washed players in blue lock who may have started out as amazing or even good. And in this point in the story, they are literally washed. Like, nothing more than almost NPCs, with an exception of some of them on this list. But they just fell off super hard. Anyways, coming in at number five, we have my boy Karasu. Now, the reason why Karasu is all the way here is because, bro, Karasu, yeah, he fell off. And yeah, he's literally washed. Like, Karasu in the current manga is literally only used for, like, interceptions. Like, just being there on defense and intercepting the ball. I don't think Karasu has actually been, like, that same guy he's been from the second selection in so long. Even in the U20 game, Karasu had a little bit of an impact. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was, like, the captain guy. The all-communications guy in the middle, manning everything. And now he's just a sh He's just a shitbox now. Karasu's just trash. Like, this dude literally just pops up for a panel or two, some chapters... Gets a fucking interception and woo woo like he goes crazy on the art for him for some reason every single time. But Karasu doesn't do shit. You see how Charles is helping Shido right now, bro? <clears throat> you would expect that Karasu could help Rin around that level. Not even near Charles's. I'm not even saying he needs to like help Rin near Charles's level, but at least be able to be like helping Rin a little bit, bro. Like, there's no way Nanase is putting in more work than you in this PXG game so far. Like, that's kind of like stupid. Like, there's no fucking way. Anyways, we're gonna have to move on from Karasu because this list is gonna get a lot worse. The next person we have is Atoya. If you guys remember back in the second selection, this dude Atoya was chosen hand picked by Jinpachi Ego. The guy at the top of Blue Lock to be the fourth rest, fourth ranked best striker. Bro, could you, if I was to tell you, listen, if someone had only read up to that point in Blue Lock, if I was to tell you that, uh, let's say a hundred chapters later, Atoya is literally like about to get kicked out of Blue Lock. Like, I'm pretty sure this dude is just... He's on the borderline with all with a lot of these bums back there with his like price range and shit. Bro, Atoya is fucking garbage. His only like weapon was him being like a stealthy ninja, you know, like he could go behind people's backs and shit. After U20, this this motherfucker got patched, bro. That one Egyptian guy was locking his shit down, bro. Locking him down, bro. He couldn't do shit. And I'm just like, bro, like on some real shit. What the fuck does Atoya even do in the manga anymore? I'm pretty sure you can remove his entire character, and in the NEL arc, nothing fucking changes. Literally nothing changes. It's not like he's a rival to anyone in the whole story. He's literally just an NPC. He's just there. Legitimately just there. The fact that you have one of your, you have one of your top five strikers back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Literally converted to an NPC is kind of crazy. I'm not going to lie. Kind of crazy. Anyways, we're going to move on from Atoya because there's only so much you can say about this shit box. Like, can someone please name me one thing that Atoya has done since his inter introduction, bro? I don't think he's done anything. He legitimately hasn't done shit. I don't even remember one thing that Atoya said in the entire series. Not one thing. I don't even know if this dude talks. Yeah, anyways, we're moving on. Coming in here, we have a little less of a fall off where we have Corona. Now, listen, Corona hasn't always been like your number. Like he's one of the best people there. He hasn't always been that. He's just been that day one by Isagi's side when Isagi had no one. And now that Isagi has more people by his side, Isagi just discards Corona. He's like, yeah, you're not you're not good enough to keep up with me. He already come. Bro, keep, like, bro, Corona was literally that you know, that planet hotline demon, like, he was like the one-two demon for Isagi, he's like, yo, if I want to get up the field, I'm going to get Corona, we're going to go up the field, but now, can you name me one thing Corona did in the Ubers match? Go to the back of your head, you have to name one thing Corona did in the Ubers match, the entire Ubers match, oh wait, yeah, I thought so, he didn't do shit, 
And the author basically used him as a way to tell Usagi that, yo, I need a better teammate. I can't do this shit with him because he doesn't think as good as me. And then just discarded Corona from the entire team. Even now in the PXG match, Corona is on the bench. He's not doing shit. Like, are you serious? A character that just maybe two matches ago was one of the most vital pieces for Isagi to get up the field is now just completely useless because you found his replacement in Hiori. I don't know, man. Like, he, Corona's fall off is just like, it's just that, bro. He is washed. Like, that dude is completely washed. And like, it's just like so sad because it feels like the author intended for him to be Hiori until he's like, yo, fuck it. I'm going to make another Hiori. And you know, that Hiori is going to be the actual teammate to Isagi. It's just disappointing, you know? Just discarding my boy Corona like that. Anyways, we're moving on. On to the next guy. We have Yuki Mia Kenyu. Now, Yuki Mia, bro. Let me have a word with you real quick. If I remember correctly, Yuki Mia was number five ranked in the second selection. Now, I know a lot of you people in the comments will be like, oh, why are you going off second selection rankings? These aren't fucking like... They, they're not that relevant to where we are now since the players are a lot better. Yes, I understand. And that's exactly why these players are washed. Because if these players were that highly ranked that early in the series, how the fuck did they all get surpassed so easily? You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure this dude Isagi was like 15th and Yukimiya was 10 spots higher than him. Come to the current story now. And yes, I know Isagi's the MC and he's supposed to keep getting better. But it's almost as if Blue Lock has just narrowed down its like striker cast to like a couple people now. Only a couple people actually have the potential to reach the top. In which previous Blue Lock, it was like almost like the whole team was like, okay, we're all hungry. We're all going to try and get our goals. But it's almost like now you know who's going to score. Which is another reason why I don't like this three goal system in the NEL. At least the five goal system in the second selection, it was like, okay, some sometimes somebody would score two goals like Shigiri. Sometimes someone would score like three like Rin did. And it's just like, it's unpredictable. You don't know. You don't really know who could score next. But in the NEL, it's like you already know who's going to get their goal. If they don't get their goal, the match will be disappointing. You know what I mean? So it's like. Fuck, like, I don't like this three-goal system. I wish they get rid of it for the rest of the manga because it makes the manga painfully predictable. I'm not gonna lie, it makes it painfully predictable. But yeah, bro, Yukimiya, bro, like, this dude had his whole character arc. Similar to Hiori in the Manshine match. He had his whole character arc where, you know, like, he had a disease and he was like, he's like, you run out of time and he had to be, like, the best. He had to get an offer. And this dude did it. Like, that shit happened. We got his character development. He made up with Isagi. And then he just, like, falls off the face of the earth. Can someone, like, again, with Corona, can someone please bring up, bring me one Yukimiya panel in the Ubers match? Just one. I'm not going to lie. He might have one. But I don't remember a thing this guy did in, in the Ubers match. I don't remember one thing he did in the Ubers match. Which is, again, a shame because the author is just using some of these matches for character arcs for one singular character you know what i mean so one character from each team let's say last last match it was like borrow and hiori these are like the two characters that got massive character development snuffy kind of too but yeah mainly those two bro and we're just gonna sideline yukimiya like this dude literally gets sidelined after one match even in pxg i'm pretty sure he's on the bench just like he corona was but the thing is, this is a worse version of Corona because this dude was top five at one point. He was top five. And since all these people are developing and getting better, I really find it hard to believe that the people who are top five and at the top before haven't even like they haven't gotten like that much better, bro. Like they're, now they're, they've been reduced to role players within one arc. It's kind of crazy, bro. Kind of crazy. And you can also make the argument that, oh, yeah, yo, most of these people, you know what I'm saying? Like. They weren't actually like that rank, you know what I'm saying? It was just for the story and like we just we don't want to rank Isagi and them that high yet. But it's just like, bro, if you're gonna introduce these guys as some of the best people in Blue Lock, have all of them like immediately like start on the net on the U20 team, and they get to choose who like plays on that U20 team, like you have to admit, these guys have to be the real deal. Like they have to be the real deal at this point in the story. Fast forward an arc later, <laughs> skip the U20 arc, fast forward an arc later, 
go to the NEL, and these guys are damn near fodder. Damn near fodder. Like, what? What the fuck? What? Why? Like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't know why. It would, I feel like Blue Lock would, was way more entertaining when this dude, um, Kaneshiro, could literally make almost every character in the series have their moment in one match. Like, that was crazy. When he could have uh, fucking Igaguri have a moment, Raichi, Ryo, Nagi, you know, like he could have multiple players have a moment and character development in a match. You know what I'm saying? And now it's like he specifies it to one character because he's constantly on a time limit of three goals. I don't know, man. The NEL is really like, listen, it's not a weekly reading type arc because, bro, you already know the three goals aren't going to happen in one chapter. It's going to take a minute for every single goal to happen. And Shido just scored. So maybe in the next two or three chapters, I'm pretty sure Bastard will probably score. But then it'll take a while for PXG to score again. And, you know, you know what I mean? It's going back and forth. Now, finally, to the last guy that I think absolutely fell the fuck off the earth and is completely washed. The reason why this guy is at the last spot here is because... I feel like out of all these people here, his fall off means the most to the story. Out of all these people here, his fall off is so drastic to the point where it hurts me on a personal level. Because I used to be a Michael Kaiser fan. Yeah, you heard it right. I used to love Michael Kaiser. I used to think that this guy was fucking cool as fuck. His weapon was cool as fuck. He was the best striker in Blue Lock, bar down. Like, there's no competition. And even being introduced as a new Gen 11 player with a rebelling Izagi on his team, he still wasn't able to score two goals in one match yet. Um, but I let it slide because, you know what I'm saying, we get to see how dominant he is when his team works for him. You know what I mean? I let that slide. So I was like, you know what? He's not scoring as much as Rin, Baro, because he doesn't have the whole team. Like He doesn't have like more of a team working for him than Izagi. Izagi's constantly trying to ruin his plans. But then we fast forward to... The Ubers match, where he ends up losing a goal scoring competition to Usagi. The Manshine match, where he literally gets outsmarted by an Usagi who just learned Metavision, by the way. Usagi learned Metavision in this match, and he's already outsmarting someone who's been using it since God knows when. We don't know. I don't know, man. Like, this dude has had one of the most craziest weapons award to him, the Kaiser Impact, to find out that in the PXG match, He's getting stopped from using it. They put three guys on him and Rain can just intercept the... Like, he can take the Kaiser Impact before he shoots it. I miss the days when the Kaiser Impact was a weapon that was damn near unstoppable. You couldn't stop him from shooting. You couldn't stop him from scoring. If he had a nice play going on, you wouldn't really stop him. I miss those days. Now, I know you guys are probably like, no, bro, but listen, the players during the NEL are getting better. So Kaiser is obviously getting caught up to and he's not as good as he was before. I understand that. But, bro, you guys act as if the main cast is the only people in the show allowed to develop and get better. I don't know why. Kaneshiro does not let the characters other than the main cast, like other than the Baros, the Isagis, the Rins, the Shidos, to constantly evolve. Why does Kaiser, like, he stayed stagnant throughout the entire NEL. He hasn't improved one bit. And now he's literally ghosting in this match against the PXG. Ghosting. We would think that Kaiser would have more of an impact on this match than Shido. We would think that. You know what I'm saying? And so far, Shido's been, like, bigger than him. Granted, Shido does have Charles passing him the ball. But still, bro, it's just like... Kaiser is getting completely locked down. He can't do his usual one-two with Grim and Ness because fucking Karasu's going to intercept it and he can't see Karasu coming and tell them, okay, pass it there instead. I don't know why Isagi would probably say, he's like, oh, I, I bet you if Isagi was doing the same play, the one and two, well, the one and two with Grim and Ness and he got intercepted the first time by Karasu, the next time he would definitely know that Karasu's coming and plan ahead. That's Isagi, though. You know what I'm saying? Apparently, Kaiser is someone who's just a better version of Isagi. So why the hell can't Kaiser do this shit? I don't understand. In the beginning, you had him stopping Nagi's like bicycle kicks. 
You had him scoring Kaiser impacts through six people blocking him. And he just like, now he's just a literal ghost for most of the match until he gets his one goal and then just fucks off again. Like, oh my gosh, Kaiser, your fall off has been generational. I'm not going to lie. Like you have literally fallen off the face of the earth. And I genuinely hope that you can come back to the glorious king that you were before. I genuinely hope. What I do think will happen is that, yes, I do think he will come back. But, like, it's really, like, it's really disappointing how the new Gen 11 striker, supposedly one of the best strikers in the world at this point, is getting locked up by Toshi Rin. And ghosting against Toshi Rin, Shido Ryusei, and quite literally losing a challenge every game to Usagi Oichi. It's humiliating. It really is humiliating. So I really do hope that Kaiser can bounce back. Anyways, you guys probably asked him why I didn't include Nagi in this. That's because in countless other videos, I've already explained why I think Nagi hasn't... Like, yes, he fell off and he's washed right now, but that's like common knowledge. You know what I mean? Like, we all know Nagi's washed. You know what I mean? We all know that shit. So it's like self-explanatory to tell you guys that he's washed. But I do think that Nagi has, is literally having like a specific character arc for him to be washed for a certain bit and then come back. Anyways, if you guys like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me out with the algorithm. Comment down who you think is a washed player. And yeah, good night.